Patchwork Heart Ministry and Fiat Ministry Network invite you to discover your mission. A brand new in-depth monthly video series featuring engaging Catholic speakers who will challenge you to live your life abundantly. For only $25 a month, you will receive a personal monthly mission, including three full-length inspirational talks that build upon a new theme each month. Sign up for the Discover Your Mission tier at patreon.com slash Patchwork Heart Ministry today. Welcome to the Sewing Hope Podcast. This is a show all about implanting hope in our hearts. I'm Bill Snyder, joined by my friend Ann DeSantis. We're glad you're here for our uplifting conversation about faith and how it sustains our hearts through all the seasons of life. Thanks for walking with us. Hey everybody, welcome to Sewing Hope this morning. Thanks so much for tuning in. And uh, we're not live on the air this morning due to a few technical issues, but uh, we are still here and it's great that you've joined us no matter what time you're listening to us. Uh, thanks for being a part of the Sewing Hope community, everybody. Uh, as always, joining me is Ann DeSantis. And so welcome, Ann, and thanks so much for uh, being here as my co-host, as always. Yes, as always, Bill. Good morning. It's always wonderful to be here. And I'm particularly excited for this episode with Michael Rosala. He's a pastoral associate and a Catholic author coming to us from Western New York. So uh, we've got some good things to talk about this morning. Yes, we do. That's great. Welcome, Michael. Thanks. Glad to be here. Yeah. So why don't you talk, just tell us a little bit about your faith journey and how things got started for you and, and, uh, and, and whatnot. Well, uh, I came from a, I'm originally from uh, Syracuse, New York. I came from a good uh, Catholic family. I, I was actually homeschooled through uh, high school after uh, uh, fourth grade. And uh, really the, the faith became more my own, or at least I took another level of becoming my own in high school. Uh, you know, like a lot of people experience that uh, uh, the, the faith of their of their parents really coming alive. And so there were there were some areas in, in my life that I was really wanted to, to work on. I was really concerned about. And I, and I remember uh, I went to at the age of 15. I, I started uh, praying the rosary and going to going to uh, going to confession and realized God's that God's help in my life. You know, to do that. And it just it just seemed like, you know, these times. Uh, what a um, time to be alive, to be there to do your part for the kingdom of God, right? When every, everything seems to be going in the other direction, right? And so I just, I just really felt a call to do something in my life to help build up the kingdom of God. Um, you know, and, and so I, I just felt like to, 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 to not be there would be like missing something. Uh, so I, I, I um, my, role model I guess at the time like like so many people was Scott Hahn and I ended up going to Franciscan University of Steubenville in Ohio which was a blessing got my uh, undergrad in theology and philosophy and my master's in theology and ministry and uh, it's just really formative experience we had a Catholic household a group of brothers uh, trying to grow in the Lord and different ministry opportunities and uh, just the the positive environment on campus, the, the theology, and um, I was I was really aiming to be a uh, professor of, of theology, and uh, I I am actually a uh, adjunct professor at Niagara University. I have been for for nine years teaching, um, but uh, I, I and I did end up in the doctoral program for theology at Ave Maria University, uh, but just kind of felt a, a calling in a different direction. Uh, and so I went into parish ministry uh, in uh, Buffalo, which is just down the throughway from Syracuse, a couple hours from uh, from my family. And I didn't know it, but my my wife to be was actually on campus at Ave Maria University at that time as an undergrad, Amazing. and we we knew um, each other's friends and people we ran into, but we didn't actually know each other. Uh, <laughs> And she was from just outside Buffalo in Batavia, New York. Uh, and so she was there, right? Uh, and so meanwhile, I was, I was back in Buffalo 
in ministry and uh, parish faith formation and uh, you know and then, then eventually we met on Catholic match wow yeah we actually met on Catholic match and then um, you know you, you just kind of get get a sense just some sometimes if from looking at a person you can just just see what they're about right and you could just just know that she could be like um she almost looked like family or something you know she just looked like she was a real sincere person and uh when we connected on facebook we just realized that we had so many friends in common our paths had crossed actually we ended up working uh at the same church at the same time it was like a country parish and we we're just both part-time i think and uh we never actually met each other believe it or not even though we were on the same staff at the same time <laughs> for <a laughs> wow wow like doing doing like uh, I, I was doing, doing like uh, rcaa so i wasn't like part of the whole staff at the time but um yeah and so now we're blessed with a son joseph mm -hmm. anthony praise god after Congratulations. Well, As I've you. said before. <laughs> yeah. Seven weeks today. Oh my gosh. Seven weeks. Precious. Today. Precious. And, <laughs> um, yeah, it's named after St. Joseph and St. Anthony, right? Uh, yeah. And, you know, I, we, we really have become a, a ministry couple. And that was something that was always my dream. My, my kind of something put on my heart. And I remember just before I met her, uh, I, I remember I, I put a, I had always put up on my on my profile about how uh, I, I had been Catholic dating for years and I had, had uh, some relationships and it just it wasn't called that that direction right but for her it was her very first time on there and I, I was just about to take down the part about me wanting to be a ministry couple and I just like that that scares people away that that that's not going the right and it was her very first time contacting anyone mm -hmm. you know and just kind of scared to do it and everything and uh that was it you know within a couple of weeks we, we just knew that that was where we were called to be and uh here we are brings a tear to my eye honestly it's just a wonderful story that's amazing Totally. Amazing. And the best part about it is it's a true story. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's a true and real story that, that happened. So i um, very happy for both you and Kate and little Joseph, and even a shout out to my friends over at Our Lady of Mercy, who, which is how I met you, Michael, yes. through your mother, your mother-in-law, Denise, and also the, the, the priests over at Our Lady of Mercy, Father Matthew, and also Father Ken, which uh, uh, you know, Bill knows well because they've been on this program uh, a couple times, actually, and, and even on my other uh, online TV show, Journeys in Faith. So uh, when I met you, when I was up there not too long ago for one of the events, uh, it was just a blessing to get to know you and your wife and learn about all the wonderful things that are happening in your life and what you've done for the Lord and you and your wife. So thank you we just are so blessed to have you on this program this morning thank you so much so blessing to be here so how is ministry going for you during this time michael how is the you know covid uh you know what what how has that changed things for you guys well uh at i i kind of been i'm in diversified ministry so i have a uh, my, my full-time pastoral associate for faith formation evangelization uh, at, at the parish, the pastor and the uh, parochial vicar, they're really, really strong on wanting to keep everything going during COVID. Uh, and the other parish, uh, I was able to really uh, kind of blaze the trail for them in technology that they had, really hadn't been there before. And so really both places, I was able to um, provide a bridge to people during this time. And we started out COVID with moving the statue of Our Lady into our living room because we just like uh, when we first heard that public masses were going to be canceled mm. uh, i know kate just started crying you know just like when are we going to receive jesus again and so we just we just moved that statue to a, a place of prominence in our home and it's you know it's mm. still there and i imagine it's going to be there for a long time you know it's going to be a centerpiece there and um we put up a video just to, uh, just kind of encouraging everybody that this this is a time for family faith it was it was lent right and yeah, so right 
they're just like, okay, so, so every evening, this is where we say our rosary, you know, and we're just encouraging everybody else to join us in that way. But, um, you know, all the different ministries we had, uh, uh, we actually, I, I have youth group on Zoom. <laughs> so we oh, have that's play great. Play video awesome. games, like, on the internet uh, and have discussion and uh, pray the Divine Mercy Chapel together. So that's, awesome. uh, that, that's been going really well. We have for the faith formation youth, we have, uh, I actually use Kahoot, uh, but it, it, it was like online interactive learning, uh, mm. but uh, so they could continue their, their faith formation that way and religious education. Um, you know, and then uh, one, of, one, of our, one of our priests to develop, develop his daily prayer intentions. And so on our Facebook pages, we post a daily prayer intention every day. Um, so so we, we, we have a number of ways and other ways as well. We've been reaching out during COVID and uh, it, it's, it's come through. I mean, parishioners, we, we see people, I see people on, on there that on Facebook and on the internet who don't come to church all the time, but they, they're, they're, too, they're, they start looking at those daily prayer intentions. They start tuning into live stream mass and hopefully it's a starting place for a further commitment, but we have to keep, continue praying that, that it goes that way for them. Absolutely. I agree with you there. There can be fruit from, from this, I believe, because maybe people who, who did not go to mass before COVID, but were watching it live streamed, maybe it enticed them to want to come back. So that's a I good know. point, Michael. Very good I, point. I remember uh, seeing something on the news about in the UK, which uh, nowadays is not a very religious country anymore. Right, but that a large percentage of the population tuning in for live streamed either masses or services. Uh, wow, that's so encouraging. That was, that was really encouraging, right? Amen. Mm. Yeah. We need to keep those prayers up for, for everyone because what a gift our faith is. And, you know, uh, God can work through all circumstances. And I do believe that He can use this, uh, what looks like it was a tragedy, right, with COVID 19, can turn it into something good by maybe drawing people back and realizing what's really important in your life. Exactly. What is really important. And, you know, on the one hand, uh, we're try trying to keep everybody safe out of charity and out of the different rules that are out there and so forth. But on the other hand, like uh, the church really is essential, you know, and I, th I think that it was unfortunate that it wasn't seen that way. Um, but um you know, we're, we're having that balance. We're in the situation that we're in. And we got to realize that, um, but like, like even some things, some things like our, our uh, Joseph Anthony is going to be baptized on my birthday, actually, June 30th. Oh, praise God. <laughs> but we weren't able to get him baptized. You know, in, in, in our diocese, there was a restriction on baptisms. We were trying to get emergency baptism, but we didn't quite qualify. You know, it, 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 it wasn't quite, uh, called for at the time we couldn't get the priest into the hospital um but but interestingly or providentially enough we ended up having a um emergency c-section and somehow because i put the prayers out there to people on the staff and people just that are good prayers and so forth and one of the priests wrote back oh you know if you need anything i was like you can come and give us anointing of the sick you know for kate Oh. And somehow they didn't even give her any trouble. He said that the only trouble he had was that there was an accident along the way and they didn't give him any trouble, but then baptism and the doctor gave permission and everything, but they said that the administrators wouldn't allow it, you know, and uh, no visitors. And so, I don't know, somehow it was meant to be. Yes. You know, and now, yeah. thankfully now that's coming up soon. It's, it'll be a great celebration Absolutely. for his baptism. And I know that you sent me the, Facebook invitation. And of course, I'm here in Philadelphia. I said, yes, I'm going, but you said it's live streamed. So I'm going to watch it. Oh, good. that's my okay. way of attending. My way of attending <laughs> is by watching video, which will be exciting to, to watch him get baptized. Yeah, we have, so we have kind of a, I was baptized on my grand grandmother's birthday and he'll be baptized on mine, but you know, baptism is a, is a new life. It's really, mm -hmm. you know, beginning of a new life. And so, uh, at least sacramentally, right. And so, yeah. we, you know, by desire, we, we hope that, that, you know, the, the, the grace is, is uh, mysteriously there, right? But uh, we're looking for the beginning of that sacramental life of grace. 
Yeah. May, may I say what a blessing it is to him and also even to every member of your family, I'm including all of the in-laws and friends, everyone, uh, that you two are this ministry couple who loves God so much and wants to do his will. And your, your son is going to be brought up in a, in a family of faith. Uh, so I just am so happy for both of you and grateful for you to the world that a couple like you, uh, especially amidst the, the chaos of our world at the current time, that you are a real beacon of light to, to others. And I know you are to me. So thank you. Thank you so much. Well, it's true. It's true. You've got to <laughs> <you gotta, laughs> be what you are. Um, like I was at the Ascension Press, which is also out of, out of the Philadelphia area, right? I, I write for them, uh, for the Ascension, um, uh, Ascension Presents now and then. And uh, they asked me to write Father's Day message for uh, as a new father. And I was just thinking about how some of the, some of the things that I have to say about Christian fatherhood are, are, are like so controversial nowadays. But I, you know, I decided that I'm, I'm not even to talk about the controversy, just be what you are, just, just proclaim what you are, uh, according to the scripture, according to uh, example of St. Joseph and so forth. And th that alone is, is, is an example, right? Oh, yes. Mm. And the, the example of our lives is the greatest book i will say like it's the greatest uh the, the greatest thing that we can offer is who we are to others in in our world well, to god mostly right god first but that speaks volumes of books doesn't it just what uh, we're living out day to day you and kate amazing couple um very proud of you of you both for for all of your wonderful work and for being great spouses and parents to your son and this is such a special time for you. My goodness. I remember when my daughter Elaine was a baby and how special was that, that first year of life. So I hope you enjoy every moment of it. Um, and if my daughter's listening, she'll say, oh, there goes my mom again. Because <laughs> <laughs> she's like 23, almost 24 now. Yeah. So, uh, But I, I still see her as my precious child, no matter what stage of her life. Um, now, I would love for people to check out your website, too. I'm going to tell them what it is so they can look. Um, it's michaeljrusala.com. Now, Michael, I'm going to spell your, your name so they know. So Michael J, and then it's R-U-S-Z-A-L-A.com. And you can learn about the work that he does, most specifically his writing. And I'm just going to list off some of these books. And Michael, maybe you can talk a little bit about it. One, it says, The New Book, A Reader's Guide. Uh, the Study of the Gospels, The Gospel of John, Lives of the Saints, Complete, January to December, Lives of the Saints, Volume 4, and Bo Lives of the Saints 3. And then it goes down uh, a little bit more, uh, Who Created God, Mother Teresa of Calcutta, A Witness to Love. I mean, these are just some of them, but it looks like you have a whole volume on the sa Lives of the Saints. Yes. Well, tell us more about your writing and uh, what's new for you also? Uh, sure. Uh, I've always, since, since actually homeschool days, had an interest and love of writing. When I was 10, I uh, used to put out a little newsletter for the, the homeschool parents, the homeschool group, uh, charge 25 cents for it. <laughs> hmm. And um, yeah, so I, just, I got, got more into that, especially in, in graduate school and writing for the uh, school newspapers, school magazines. And uh, so I, I've gotten involved in a online uh, boutique publisher. They, they especially distribute their, their books on Kindle. And they're also available in soft cover. Uh, but uh, oftentimes they, they'll have a, a promotion. They'll give it away uh, as a free book of the month or something at Wyatt North Publications. And so these books, these books get around. I know I've, I've had, uh, in Buffalo, we have a lot of students from all over the place from, from the University of Buffalo. And uh, somebody from India said, said that their friend knew my book over in India, or I've had, or just like, uh, you know, in my choir, I never talked about the book. And then all of a sudden, you know, one of the choir members is like, oh yeah, I just came up in my email, your, your book on Padre Pio. Um, and so these, these books get out there, you know, tens of thousands of readers per book sometimes. And um, 
the they are for a general audience. Uh, they are something that 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 people just you know find on Amazon and and to start reading for for pleasure, right? Uh, but I started out with Pope, Pope Francis uh, when he first came out. You know, just kind of uh, what did he's all about, and they asked me right as soon as he got elected. And this is before the Year of Mercy, before all that. I kind of I called it Pastor of Mercy, kind of looking at what direction oh, wow. he's going to go in. You know, um, and you were right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because he hadn't he didn't really talked about that yet. But I was just looking at that where he was as a cardinal, looking at some of the formative experiences of his priesthood, and I thought that he's going to mm -hmm. look, look at it from perspective of mercy, like a whole lens of looking at the church. Yeah, yeah. You, you were right on spot on on this one. Yeah, but it's it's been um, you with the lives of the saints. All, all the all the memorials, all the uh, solemnities, feasts, and also some of the really popular optional memorials, right? Some of the real popular saints uh, as well. And, and so we're going through the whole calendar uh, from January to December. I saw that. So many, yeah, so 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 many uh, amazing saints. And uh, one of our favorites, of course, is Saint Joseph, uh, foster father of Jesus. Same here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> mm -hmm. I love St. Joseph. Yeah, I remember one time I went to a confession at Franciscan University of Steubenville and a priest, that I, I don't think I ever saw him again, but he said that uh, I sense that you're called to uh, a um, mission of service, leadership, and strength in the uh, example of humility, in the example of St. Joseph. Mm. Wow. That, yeah. That's very beautiful. It yeah. is beautiful. It is. I I just see your you and Kate, your life as uh, a road ahead, a, a road of walking with the Lord, with your family, and just the wonderful example that you are to people. Um, you've given your whole life to God. So we're just, Bill and I are very honored to, to have you on Sewing Hope. And I just want to, for those of your friends who are listening, uh, to connect with Sewing Hope on social media. Now we spell sewing hope S E W I N G, and our little logo is is like a, a picture of a potted plant, and it says you know hope sewing hope. Uh, so uh, check it out on on all of the social media platforms because we're on Facebook, on Instagram, we're even on Twitter and LinkedIn too. Uh, so I just invite people to to connect with us too. We'd love to make friends. Uh, also, Michael, is there a way that people can connect with you aside from your website? Do you have any social media platforms there that they can link with, can connect? Uh, yes, on my website, you can find my uh, Twitter handle. Okay. Those, that's especially the way. And okay. you can, oh, well, you can uh, contact me uh, through the website as well, the contact form. Okay, excellent. Awesome. We would also love to hear, Michael, about your experience being the pastoral associate, because I, I know you're not just a pastoral associate, because you have so much experience with youth ministry and with other parts of uh, Catholic ministry. So love to hear. Well, uh, the, fu the full title is Pastoral Associate for Faith Formation and Evangelization. So it's pr pr primarily uh, a catechetical role. Uh, but it's, it's, as in a lot of parishes, it's something where uh, it expanded a couple different roles, merged into one. And I, I, I love being able to do uh, diversified ministries. I, somehow that, that's just what I like to do. And uh, I, I was at another parish before the one I'm at now, and I'm also um, currently a music director at, at, at another parish still. <laughs> oh, are you? Uh, okay. Yeah, 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 totally. Um, but uh, religious education, we have both uh, classes and uh, grades one through 10 classes, faith and life series. We have a, a strong uh, foundation there. And then we also have an intergenerational program that I lead. Uh, we have, I started up a, a youth group, actually just noticing so many of the uh, teenagers already having commitments and already having ideas about youth ministry. I started out in middle school, and uh, and as they've 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 grown up now that they're entering high school, but it was a couple of years ago, and just kind of identifying a group of of friends that way in a parish that 
really no longer had a youth group. And so there's that something just to develop my own youth ministry system and um, adult faith formation. Uh, we, we do a lot of t outreach through technology, uh, just, just finding a lot of new ways to connect in the parishes, social media, the, the, the internet, uh, video and just uh, uh, the, the the publications that we put out our email newsletter awesome awesome you know it's so great that you um, that that you embrace the technology especially with with young people uh, because you know I I would find that if if you were not technologically relevant as a youth minister you didn't get you know, much of a, much of an audience. I mean, you know, being, being myself, you know, I, I fortunately was a tech geek and was able to, you know, utilize some of those means. So I'm glad to hear that you're, that you're, you know, using the videos and using the uh, technology, because I think that does capture, you know, our attention. You know, I was, I was making the comment yesterday to my wife, I was watching a, a, a TV show. It was a, it was a high, it was a TV show about, on HGTV. And we're sitting there watching it uh, last night, and I said, "Are you? Do you realize that the that the that the um, camera is changing every three seconds? The camera angle is changing every three seconds." And and she goes, I, I, and, "And I'm counting it: one, two, three. What? Like this is our attention span. This is what this is what their attention span has become. So if you don't embrace that technology, you know." So good, good to hear you're doing that. And, and really with all people, even adults, we have, we have short little attention bands too. So right. uh, it's great that you're doing that. Exactly. I agree. And not only for the young people, but Bill, you and I both know, even with Sewing Hope, we have to do that. <laughs> I mean, yeah. even, with the, even with the podcast, I mean, we have to find ways to, uh, to reach people in different ways, even with videos and commercials and things like that to catch people's attention. So Great work, Michael. I mean, um, as a as a mother of of uh, young adults, I can say that I, I appreciate that too. People like you who minister to uh, our youth and young adults, and how important is that? Because they need to see people like you and Kate who are living it out, who are there to educate, to pray for, and just be there for uh, those those people, young people who need to have. Uh, that closeness with God and yearn for it too. So um, awesome work. Thank you. Thank you so much. One, one other uh, little hat I have at the parish is they, they have a preschool there. Oh, preschool. <laughs> yeah. yeah and uh, I've kind of become their preschool music instructor. <laughs> but it's just like uh, seeing for, for for some of them it's it's a preschool that is um uh not a, necessarily a catholic preschool but it's one that is like open to faith and so for some of them uh we we, we bring, bring in a lot of religious songs to kind of evangelize them to introduce them to jesus mm -hmm. and them uh, and uh I, I also developed the vacation bible school program we do our own programs often catholic uh, twice a year. And so uh, merged with religious ed and the preschool together, they come together. And one of the small group questions was, who, who first told you about Jesus? And, you know, one of the preschools said, if it was like a pre preschooler said, I'm Mr. Michael, you know, they'd never heard about Mr. Michael. Before. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Isn't that and a blessing? Heard. Yeah, and then you know when they heard we're having a baby, they said they they're have they're they're having a baby, and uh, it's Jesus. It's like, well, not quite, but that's that's. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. well, you know what? Think about this, Michael. I mean, you're ministering to those young uh, toddlers and preschoolers. Pretty soon, that'll be Joseph. I yeah. Mean, before you know it, he he. I mean, I know he's just only you know, a couple months old now, but. I will say the time does tend to go fast when you have a little one. Yes, indeed. They, they have a program for uh, toddlers as well, but well, we'll see. Uh, I wondered if you could spend some time also telling us a little a bit about Kate and her ministry work, because I know right at this moment, she is uh, being the stay at home mom, which I was for so many years. And I understand the importance of that. So what, what was she involved with before uh, motherhood? 
Absolutely. So uh, she is uh, especially a youth minister. Uh, and, and, and so she uh, developed a, a youth group from scratch uh, over the past three years that she's grown that. Uh, yeah, before COVID, she was a director of faith formation as well. Uh, and uh, in the past, she's also been a school religion teacher, and uh, before that, also a director of, of religious education. Um, awesome. She she is definitely like like I always call, she she always says she always disputes it right, but I, I always call her like the heart of my youth group. <laughs> you know, like she's one of the <laughs> she, she like <clears throat> being together gives the full witness. You know, and and she's just great with them. Uh, and really helps make it possible. So she's so involved, especially in the different things I do. And uh, um, she's also currently a, a consultant for us for and books and more kind of outside of ministry. Yes, right? I'm familiar. Yeah. Um, Can you tell us about us born? Because I, I know that they really offer a great product for um, young people. Yeah, well, we're hoping to homeschool. Uh, hopefully, uh, we can homeschool Joseph when he gets a little older, right? Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> us born books and more, they're, they're very educational books. They, they are not the type of children's books that you just find in the on the shelf for the most part in the store. They, they are really unique. I mean, I was, I was really surprised by how educational these books are and how much you can learn from them. Um, one of them, actually, I use in the music program at the preschool and it's uh uh just the with, with the, the the rhythm of different musical instruments in a in a book that i have not found anything like it just the the, the putting together of of rhythm and story and picture in such a unique way and some of the books have like touchy feelies or they have different like uh ways that you can interact with them Hey, that's awesome. Yeah. I would love it if you could share with our listeners how people can get in touch with Kate if they would like to host uh, something, because I know that she does the online parties that people can do right from their home. I mean, you don't even have to have people over or anything like that. You can just do it all online. Uh, yeah, is there absolutely. a way that they can get in touch with her? Yeah, uh, would we be able to put up a link maybe? Uh, okay. Later on? Okay. Yeah, we can okay. get a link. Yeah, we can get a link in on the uh, show notes. So if you just send us a link, uh, I'll put it right in the show notes on the podcast uh, version of this. So you'll be able to click right on that link and uh, be able to contact Kate. Uh, absolutely. So folks, if you're listening to this, look for the link below us, uh, both on YouTube and on uh, Podbean and uh, anywhere else you're listening to this, uh, you'll be able to see the link. I think also, thank you, Bill. I think also it's very beautiful that both you and Kate come from families of faith. I know your mother-in-law, Denise, uh, from Our Lady of Mercy, and what a wonderful woman. And it's just beautiful what you described, uh, the whole story. And I know that she came from an upbringing of a very deep devotion to the Catholic faith and to Christ. So uh, how amazing is that? And even it even went back another generation, as I know Denise's mom, her grandmother was also such a woman of faith who passed away this this past year and um, it's so beautiful to see that faith being passed down and now to Joseph yes <laughs> amazing so I uh, wondered if you had any thoughts Michael also on people who are kind of away from their faith because you are a person who you know you're working to bring people to to Christ and into the Catholic Church would you have any advice for someone listening who's kind of on on the verge of deciding whether or not they do want to remain in the church or get back to mass and really, you know, just uh, make that commitment again, or maybe they've never made it in the first place. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I'll say with this whole situation right now of, of uh, COVID and hopefully coming out of COVID uh, as a society, right. Um, and everything else going on with the social unrest and the, different injustices that uh, are going on and so forth. We need God, right? Um, we, uh, if this has shown us anything, it's that, you know, the bonds between us, not natural for them to be, to be broken, right? Uh, it's, it's not natural for us to only go to Walmart, you know, or just get things delivered to our house. You know, we, we, we need more than just food. We need, uh, man does not live by bread alone, right? Mm. And what's the purpose of it? What's the meaning of it? Um, 
where does this uh, sense of that we should have justice come from? You know, it comes from God. Um, and so for, you know, a lot of people, I remember right after 9-11, uh, the churches were full for, for two weeks or something, right? Um, but our society seems to say you can be spiritual but not religious, right? Uh, but that, that's not challenging us. Uh, that's not fully challenging us. That's not bringing the bonds of community together for us. Um, and, and furthermore, what about God? Like God deserves to be worshiped in the way that he's, he's instituted, right? And so if, if God has actually spoken, you know, who are, who are we to say, well, we only want to worship God in the way we want to, or we only, only want to believe in the way we want to. If God has spoken through, through Jesus and the church, then we have a responsibility to answer that call. And so that's why we, we, we need the church. That's why we have to commit to the church and be part of it. Mm. Yeah, I, I, you know, I like that. I like that a whole lot because, you know, I, I, I think uh, the, the one thing you touched on there is relativism. I mean, we don't talk about that a whole lot in our, in our society anymore. Uh, you know, I, I, I think the church has done a little bit of a job talking about what relativism is. And, uh, but, but you certainly touched on it there. And I think, uh, for, for people who understand that, um, you know, it, it, it doesn't mean that, you know, we can just revolve around ourselves and our faith life cannot just revolve around ourselves. It has to revolve around something greater, uh, which is, which is the truth of the Catholic faith. And, um, you know, of course the Catholic church, I, I, I think a lot, oftentimes we confuse, um, how do I want to say it? We, we, we confuse the joining you along the journey with, uh, you know, of your faith life with the, well, you can believe whatever you want, you know, and, and there, and those two things are very different. When yeah. you, when you look at it, it's like, okay, you know what, I, I can accept you where you are in your faith journey, and I can encourage you to come to know the truth more, but I cannot say to you that the truth revolves around you and whatever you believe. And I think that that's a distinction that we have to make within uh, the church. And, uh, you know, it starts at a young age, it starts at, you know, understanding these truths, you know, and that they are absolute truth, and that they are not going to uh, just be wiped away because of a feeling that we have. And um, so, so I, so I really uh, appreciate what you're saying, Michael, about that. I really do. And <clears throat> looking back to the recent uh, uh, Gospel of John book that I, I've, I've written, you know, Jesus in the Gospel of John, he, he uh, really t requires people to, to take a stand and to respond to him, right? He, he said, um, he, he allowed people to walk away, right? If, if, uh, he said, I am, I am the bread of life, and he made them take a stand about that. Uh, P Peter responded, I, uh, your, yours are the words of, of eternal life to where, where shall we go? Right. And so again and again, he, he challenges people to accept him as the way, the truth, and the life. Yeah. Thanks yeah. for bringing it back to Jesus, too. I mean, that, that is the truth. And what Bill said about relativism, you know, and as you're bringing up children, it's so important for them to know that, yes, there is one truth, and that is uh, Jesus Christ and the church and uh, the sacraments of our faith, and, and they are the gift that we've been given by Christ himself. So uh, I just commend you for, for recognizing that. And now your son's going to be brought up the right way, truly. I mean, because from the very beginning, you and Kate uh, understand that and you're uh, passing that faith on to your son and to your future uh, rest of your family. So uh, that, that's just a, such a great thing. I, I wanted to just kind of backtrack a little bit. You mentioned that you were homeschooled. <laughs> and that you'd like to homeschool uh, Joseph. And uh, first of all, I don't know if I share this, and if I did earlier in the podcast, forgive me, but I did homeschool my two daughters from uh, K to 12 oh, and, wow. until, until college. Um, and it was just the greatest blessing ever. And we were involved in some of the uh, Catholic co-ops uh, where we would meet 
either once a week or every other week with, with other families and how, what a blessing that was to meet uh, like-minded folks and, and have the girls be able to have that time for socialization and also learning. So um, I didn't know if you had any words of advice also to parents out there uh, who are considering this because uh, you have been around young people for quite a long time with your youth ministry. So I didn't know if you had any words of advice to them who are raising children about sure. um, how to, to put them in the right direction toward a deep faith. Sure. And, and a lot of parents were, were forced into what might be called homeschool, right? Because COVID, but um, homeschool, like Catholic homeschool, homeschool because you choose to homeschool is really different. Uh, it's it's not simply, you know, being required to be in distance learning from, from the public school. Um, it, it is, um, for one, you have to be intentional about it. Like, why are you homeschooling? It, or, or, you know, you have about, especially about the centrality of the faith and, and handing on the faith. Uh, I'd say also uh, understanding that the different subjects ultimately all truth comes from God, right? And, and so that doesn't mean that that the actual facts are, are different, right? But it means that we have an understanding that this somehow also all derives from God. Um, I'd, I'd, I'd also say that a lot of parents struggling right now with, with COVID, um, a, a, a schedule every day, you know, start in prayer, uh, uh, have have a, a outline of what you're going to do at which time, and going outside the house. You know, having an interaction with homeschool group or extracurriculars or sports, or going to the park, uh, going on field trips. Uh, I know some of the things I learned most from homeschool were not just the content, but also uh, the initiative. That's what really came to me was the idea of initiative that you drive yourself. You, you set your goals. Um, and uh, so I, th I think that there are a lot of skills that can be brought out through homeschool in that way. Yeah, I agree. And I like what you said about the field trips too and everything. That was such a blessing for us uh, because you can work your schedule the way you like when you're homeschool. You can. I mean, but the point that you made about the structure, there has to be some kind of structure in the morning. You wake up, have some prayer time. Uh, you know, of course, breakfast and your lunch, you know, meals and everything like that, schedule those in. But um, there, there can be a loose schedule too. I mean, if, if, if a child is interested in one topic and you want to spend a little extra time on that one that day, that's the beauty of homeschooling too, is that you can, you, you can work it in. Yeah. Work and I'd say that, that um, of course, not homeschooling yet, but looking at my experience, not everybody's experience would be like mine. Um, but we, we had different focus. Uh, like we had a focus on music, focus on art. Uh, mm. We did private art, private music lessons. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, um, uh, if, if, you, if you can dig in further, capture the ch a child or teenager's interest in a certain area and really focus on that, in a way that you know maybe beyond the curriculum so they can go deeper and then see other things in light of that right yeah oh that's yeah. so important yeah because they really and truly all of us have been given different gifts and don't they really start to come out in a greater way i think in those like adolescent years you can really start to see where their interests lie you know i know my my younger daughter sean who may be listening right now uh she had a, a great interest in, in the arts and music yeah. And it, it has developed so much. And uh, she now has her own business and she's a college student with a, uh, getting her degree in communication. And so it's, it's just been great to see that blossom. And it really does. And right. you foster that. That's what you do through, through prayer and through discipline, right? There has to be some kind of Absolute discipline, prayer and discipline every day. And uh, you, you've got to keep going. You've got to keep a focus in in um meeting goals right but so I, I know i found the transition to college academically was was very seamless uh you know just just found college to be very easy we also uh went to i also got a chance to go to some community college classes while i was in high school you know mm. so oh, just, good. yeah 
exactly. Amazing. But but also ultimately, um, like as I say, a special focus on art and music. And I know growing up, people always said you you'll never uh, you won't be able to get a career in art or music, right? So I went into theology. Um, <laughs> Did they say that? Oh boy. Um, but uh, but anyway. Uh, oh. But, but anyway, I, I've definitely incorporated art and music into what I do. Um, like for, for one, with a lot of the technology and the uh, putting together of, of things and, and the, the, the creativity, I, I use a lot of my art skills in a new way, especially digitally. Mm. And um, music, I, I, have, I don't know if we've mentioned, mentioned yet, yeah, I am a music director at uh, mm. uh, another parish in the city, an organist and choir Tell director. Us, yeah. yeah, and so... I kind of did, you know, I, 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 you, you, none of these things, people also said, you know, you, you can't make a, a living out of writing. You know, I do all these things on the side. I'm sure you can make a living out of writing. You can, you can do all these things you set your mind to, um, but you have to be kind of entrepreneurial about it. Yep. You, you've, you've got to um, find a need and fill it. Uh, but I just love what I do. I know, you know we used to have the idea of, um, being a well-rounded person, being a uh, uh, with with the liberal arts of of, of the good, the true, the beautiful, uh, having not not just a specialty, but but having a, an understanding of uh, God as as truth and all these different aspects of Him, right? Uh, and, and so that that's kind of where I've been coming from. And I, and I just look out in the society, and I think we're we're definitely losing that, uh, and. Especially, yes. I think with COVID, just looking at uh, the, uh, you know, there, there, there are a lot of good things, of course, about staying, staying safe and so forth. But you look at how much control, you know, the government has over all these different professions. And, you know, if you, if you don't do this, your license could be taken away or, or so forth. And, it, you know, it's become all these specialties that are uh, sanctioned by the government, right? Um, and so... I think that um, there, there's something to just being well balanced, right? Amen. Mm -hmm. Right? Because um, it, it, we're not just all part of a system. You know, we're not just all part of the system that um, specialty is given to us by the experts, right? There's something yeah. more to our humanity. Yeah. You know, I, I often, I think I've even mentioned on uh, a couple of podcasts ago, um, or maybe uh, right. that that we follow or a society tries to push us into this social script. There's a social script of like, okay, this is how life is supposed to go. You're supposed to, you know, be born. Then when you get born, you're supposed to go to school. When you go to school, then you're supposed to do that really well so you can get into a good college and then go from college into a really good job. And then, uh, then you're supposed to have, you know, uh, you know, a nice wife or a nice you know, relationship and then uh, repeat that process over again with your, with you, with, with your kids, having kids like this is the social script that is pushed on, you know, almost every TV show it's pushed on, you know, throughout our government, it's pushed throughout. This is, but what a dull life. Like, 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 like when you look at that, I'm glad you agree. Like yeah. What a dull life yeah. at the end of, at the end of that, like what a dull life. Like, I don't want that life for me. I don't want that life for my kids. I want their, you know, I mean, I mean, of course we have, we have to teach responsibility. We're not talking about not, not teaching kids responsibility. We're not talking about, you know, te not, not teaching them virtue and those things. But the problem is that when you just follow this, this script of, of life, um, then you end up just just empty at the end you know there's just material possessions there's just things and and you feel almost you know compelled to follow this and it's so hard to break out of that so so it's so good to hear both of you talking yeah. about a way to break out of it i, I oh, just, yeah i was inspired in, in, back in, in the middle ages the idea of the renaissance man like michelangelo uh had something about just kind of trailblazing these different areas not being a specialist and I mean there's a place for specialty I mean I'm glad they had specialists at the hospital right to deliver our baby and actually it just it so happened that uh, one, the doctor who delivered our baby was um, uh, a, 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 a girl in undergrad that I used to um, be at the lunch table she was that student oh my goodness wow yeah you know, the life <laughs> doctor and whatnot Maybe. somebody recommended her and it's just like oh I, I know you <laughs> but um <laughs> Yeah, the um, but you got to be smart about it. Like, 
the 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 dream of following the true, the good, and the beautiful, kind of being well rounded, well educated, mm -hmm. and then making it happen. I, I know when, when I um, was, was looking for a, what to do, I was looking at what what are the needs they have, and especially in a, in the area, the 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 need was for. Uh, <clears throat> people to organize religious education, right? Uh, so I got into that. I was about theology, philosophy, you know, and so not many of my colleagues were, were, were going that way. Uh, they, there was a separate catechetical track where people wanted to go that way, right? but, but I was kind of looking at how, how do I get into that? Uh, and then uh, there was a need in our area for organists. So I was a, you know, a trained vocalist and a pianist. And I slowly transitioned into organ, you know, to, to kind of fill that need. And to feel the need for also a more solemn liturgy, uh, and then uh, in teaching adjunct, just just kind of when I came to Buffalo, sent out my resume to the different different colleges, and I was a um, doctoral student. I had academic publishing done and conferences and so forth. So just just kind of like look, looking at what, how can I direct what I am into what is needed, right? Um, oh, that's that's so amazing. It's, folks coming our way. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, no, I was just going to say, just kind of um, going back a little bit. I think also what it comes down to everything that you and Bill are talking about is also just recognizing that every life has meaning, no matter what age. So even though we're repeating yeah. this process of, say, you know, going to school and then finding us uh, our spouse and raising kids, and then then they have kids, and you know kind of that whole process of the, of life continuing but remembering that every single age at every age we there's a meaning in life and god has a purpose even for the oldest person in the world right i mean yeah, don't you think it comes down to that too that children have have a value to god as far as even what they can offer the world and and even the oldest person that you can think of has has value absolutely and meaning so um, it's that pro-life message, isn't it? Absolutely, it is. Yeah. So um, now we're coming about five minutes to the end of the program. And I, I thought maybe if you could share with us, you mentioned on your website, and I'll mention that website again, it's michaeljrusala.com. So you definitely want to check it out and look at all the great uh, books that he has to offer, is that you are also a speaker who is available for speaking engagements. Now we're coming out of COVID, so I don't know how much of that's going on right at this exact moment, but making that invitation to pastors and diocese and archdiocese to continue to consider getting in touch with Michael about those speaking engagements. Maybe you can tell us about that. Um, yeah, sure. I mean, I'm available to talk about, especially the topics of my books or about uh, catechesis, evangelization in general. Uh, my wife and I, uh, we, especially we witness on the theology of the body, like to, to talk together. Actually, that's how I met, met you. I, I, we're doing, we were doing that's a right. you know, doing presentation at a parish in, in Leroy, New York, right? About uh, theology of the body together, just kind of our story mixed in with it. Um, one of the, uh, my pet projects as a, with, with, with writing was my, my book, Who Created God? Uh, a, a teacher's guidebook for answering children's tough questions about God. And so again, I was coming in from philosophy, theology, and loving uh, Saint Thomas Aquinas. You know, the, the faith and reason joined together. And uh, I was uh, going through these different classrooms of, of of kids and had question and answer. And I, mean, I know that they always say when you're transition going into the into catechetics, not to um, not to just preach theology to them, right? But I kept going back to St. Thomas Aquinas and not using his words, but coming up with activities, with visuals um, that would show them that there is an actual answer to their question. Catechists would say again and again, um, who created God? Well, that's a mystery that none of us can know. It's like, no, you, we, we can get into that. Maybe you can't read the Summa Theologica, right? <laughs> Maybe I don't need to tell you about that in the mm -hmm. third grade or something. But um, great saints and, and thinkers have actually shown that we can have a taste of the answer to that, you know? Um, yeah. Why did God create the world? Well, that's a mystery nobody can know. Well, actually, 
we can have a hint <laughs> about it, right? And it just like sh show like uh, w why did we um, br bring forth Joseph? You know, it's just kind of the, the love of God wanting to overflow, uh, right? And there are ways that children can understand this. And once, you know, so many people are saying that um, we have to just focus on children's experience and so forth. And it's like, well, yeah, but there's also a revealed word of God and there's a way that, that children can be taught that. Um, and, and also these deeper points of theology. I, I, I broke it down, uh, 11 questions from real quick kids. If the fir the first part of each chapter is a background for the catechist, so kind of like an adult faith formation. And then it goes into uh, the method of uh, teaching. It's like a lesson plan with nice with um, starting out with scripture. So kind of a proclaim a scripture and then uh, going into a visual, which goes in, which is like symbolic of what is thought of. Like, like think of where, where did, where did God come from? And I have a, um, a pendulum with uh, several balls and just like, how is this pendulum going to start moving? Mm -hmm. Right. So somebody take the end of the pendulum and start it. And that's why there had to be one being at the beginning, right? What started, if, if they say, well, well, the Big Bang, well, no, what, what, what started everything in movement? That doesn't explain anything. And so I'm going back to St. Thomas Aquinas, but I'm, I'm just mostly talking to them about this pendulum. Uh, so it, it details all that in the book with illustrations from me, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I drew all the illustrations myself and um, also follow up follow-up uh, application activities and prayer services for each chapter as well. well I'm blessed cool. that you gave me a copy of that book, so thank you. Thank you. And it's also you uh, on Kindle, uh, I formatted it myself. This is, um, and it's easy, easy, easy click through table of contents. It, there's a glossary at the end where simpler terms are tied into more complicated terms. So it's tied down theologically. It has the imprimatur from the bishop. And I highly recommend it, even for those who um, maybe aren't catechists, but maybe their parents, grandparents, or just want to know. It, you know, it, it, it uh, so many questions that are never answered for anyone um, <laughs> about the nature of God. Yeah. Thank you, so Michael. Beautiful. It really is beautiful. It has been such a pleasure. I can't believe we're almost finished the program. Uh, so say, please say hello to Kate and Joseph and also your whole family and friends. And we're so grateful to you. And I invite listeners again to go to michaeljrosala.com and learn more about Michael. So thank you so much sincerely from the Sewing Hope podcast from Bill Snyder and myself. Thank you, Bill and Ann, for having me on. It's been a pleasure. God bless you. Yeah. God bless absolutely. you. Absolutely. Michael will certainly have you back. Um, and uh, for our Amen. listeners. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And uh, just for our listeners, uh, of course, you remember that you can connect with us. I think Ann mentioned at the beginning of the program. But again, uh, sowinghope at patchworkheart.org is our email. S-E-W-I-N-G, hope at patchworkheart.org. Uh, so if you want to get in touch with us or you can't remember any of the websites or you're listening to this and you're going, oh, what was that? Just email us at uh, s-e-w-i-n-g hope dot or uh, dot, at patchworkheart.org um, and of course uh, go over and check out our websites uh, you know andesantis.com and patchworkheart.org as well uh, we've got great uh, programs and and, uh, and and media initiatives for you uh, on 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 uh, different media outlets and, and stuff like that so please check out our websites uh, we're very excited to be able to partner uh, with with uh, each other and be able to put on a great podcast for you each uh, two great podcasts for you each and every week so thanks and thank you michael uh, it's been an absolute pleasure um, and until next time from all of us here at patchwork heart ministry i'm bill snyder keep beating to your catholic heart and sowing hope into broken hearts thanks for listening to this episode of sowing hope on patchwork heart radio for more information about this podcast and our ministries visit our websites patchworkheart.org and andesantis.com You can also follow and interact with us on Twitter at PWH Ministry or andesantis2. Patchwork Heart Ministry and Fiat Ministry Network invite you to discover your mission a brand new in-depth monthly video series 
featuring engaging Catholic speakers who will challenge you to live your life abundantly. For only $25 a month, you will receive a personal monthly mission, including three full-length inspirational talks that build upon a new theme each month. Sign up for the Discover Your Mission tier at patreon.com slash patchworkheartministry today.